the Air Gun Advisor is brought to you today by Air Guns of Arizona, High Pressure Pneumatics, Michigan's premier air gun shop, Air Force Air Guns, and Rapid Airworks, makers of raw air guns. You'll find links to these and more in the description down below. All right, we are here at the Midwest Air Gun Show. I'm Chad Kenner, and we have Mark Boobles here from Wisconsin. Now, Mark is one of the premier air gun collectors in all of the United States. Now, I know, he's probably gonna blush when I say that, but he has got some of the coolest stuff, and we're gonna start right here with this on the top. Mark, tell us a little bit about this air gun, if you would. So this is the serial number one air gun that Ernie Cowan and Rick Keller made back in 2005, 2006. They used Beeman's Giordani air rifle to copy, and in that process, they feel like they had discovered the real Lewis and Clark gun. They made four copies. This is their first one that they came out with. It took about 15 months to complete this gun alone. And it's a 22 shot. It'll hold 21 rounds in the magazine, one in the chamber. Gives you 22 rounds, which no other Giordani's are capable of doing that, except for one that came from Germany. And in the Rodney journals, they mentioned a 22 shot gun. So the evidence is really strong that they did copy the real gun, and this was made directly from that gun. So a couple of real quick things, because I know a lot of you back home have not had the opportunity to see something like this before. We got the air reservoir here. It's a big butt reservoir. What does this get pumped up to? 850 PSI in this. So what for me is what's crazy is we're talking about 850 PSI. Air gunners, what caliber? This is 46. 46 caliber. Air gunners, you guys are thinking you need 4,500 PSI for a 45, 50 caliber projectile. This only has 850. Lewis and Clark was using this. They could go hunting with it, all kinds of different things. So open your minds a little bit to the possibilities. 850 versus that 450 PSI that we are all aiming for this day. Also right here, this is the magazine, That's right? The magazine. Can I flip Correct. it open? Yep, go ahead and just pushes out. and. Rotates down. So this is for balls, right? Lead That's balls. For the, for the lead balls, yes. And the lead balls would go down in here into this cocking mechanism. I'll get a close-up of this here in just a minute. But this cocking mechanism, can I go ahead and move it over? You can go ahead and move it over. So it slides over, which allows a ball to slide in there. I'm going to just do this. You can see this moves over, which allows that ball to slide in to the cocking mechanism and then right into the barrel line for the barrel. Is that correct? That's correct. Where in the world would you ever find one of these? Don't tell us your secrets. They're, 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 they're tough to find. Don't tell us your secrets. <laughs> so we have this one here. What else do we have down below? So this one is made most likely by John Matten. John Matten was a premier firearm manufacturer in London. He's not known for making air guns. And from all the evidence, it is Mark Matten, London. It's most likely the only air gun he produced. Some manufacturers did produce air guns, one or two, just to prove that they could do it at the time. This would have been manufactured right around 1790 or so. 1790, guys, that's why you come to shows like this to see stuff like this right here. We got the final one down here, is that correct? Correct, that's a bait, made in, also made in London, late 1700s. That one is a 54 bore, that's a, that's a big gun. Now we're still talking about, about 850 PSI in correct. there? Correct, yep. Do you mind if I pick this up real Go quick? Go ahead. So, oh, two hands, not too heavy though, but look at the work on this. All of that detail, absolutely beautiful. Now this is a muzzle loader, right? Correct. So they would actually load this from the muzzle, yep. pound it down in there, and then you get, how many shots? That one I would assume, because it's got a pretty big valve, that thing's probably only gonna get 15, maybe 20 shots, whereas the Giordani tank and its valving will allow up to 40 shots out of this. Now what everyone back home is gonna wanna know, are they regulated? Because everyone thinks they have to have a regulated air gun. They are are these regulated? They are not regulated. Not regulated. There's so. actually a camshaft inside there that times the valve so it'll rotate around and hold the valve open long enough to get the power that the gun needs to fire. That's absolutely awesome. And this one on top here that he was mentioning is a reproduction yes. of the Lewis and Clark. Now as a reproduction, they did, and correct me if I'm wrong, because I know just a little bit of the history, they tore apart, or I shouldn't say use the word tore, but they <laughs> took apart gently the original to Correct. figure out exactly how it works. So this is a identical replica it's with identical. the internals and everything inside. And it was made using equipment that was only available in 1780, 1790. There's no modern machinery done to produce this gun. This was all done exactly like it would have been done in 1780, 1790. Now, since we're talking about old stuff, I'm gonna ask another quick question here. You have these butt reservoirs, right? Yep. 
Do you know, how would they manufacture these? Because these have to be obviously enough to hold that 850 PSI while also being yes. airtight. How, so are, what, how are they doing this? What they had is a flat piece of steel, and then it was wrapped. They made a cup on the back. You'd wrap it around. There's rivets that run along here, so they'd rivet it all up. And once it's all completed, submerge the entire thing in brazing material and embrace the entire tank. And the brazing is what actually seals it. Okay. So it's not the steel, it's that it's brazing. It's not the steel, it's the brazing that seals it. That is absolutely phenomenal. And there is the pump that uh, Ernie Cowan had made for these tanks that go on this gun. Now, how hard is it to pump something like this back in the day? 1700s, we're talking? 2,000 strokes of that pump to fill that bottle. 2,000 for 40 shots? For 40 shots. I bet they wish they had some air compressors. Yes, they did. <laughs> and I say that because we're going to transition real quick he also does sell some air compressors, right? And you have yes. a website that you're working I, from? I do what have is a website. that website? It's uh, bbsgllc.com. Okay, and he is carrying the G GX. X, the GX compressor. So go check that website out as well. Guys, if you haven't ever come to an air gun show, this is one of the reasons you need to come. Not only are there killer deals, but there are killer items here you're not gonna see anywhere else. Mark, thank you for your thank time. You. Yep. Guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next time right here on the Airgun Advisor.